This is Lecture 3M for Calculus 1 on the roller coaster problem. The roller coaster problem, uh, a more complicated version of this roller coaster problem, is given in the textbook on page 243 by Stewart. At least that's in the fifth edition. Um, what it is is an exercise in conducting a and constructing a con continuous piecewise function with continuous first derivatives. We're going to use a simplified uh, version of his problem in order to solve it in just a couple slides. Other than that, we're going to use his basic design. So this roller coaster will consist of three sections. It'll have a straight section that's going up. Let me get the uh, marker. Okay, so it, it has a straight section that's just going up with a slope of 0 0.8. That encounters a parabolic section, that's an, a parabola opening downward that takes us over a bend, and that encounters another straight section with a downgoing slope of minus 1.6. The first linear section meets a parabola 200 feet off the ground, and let's say that the horizontal length of the parabolic section is 100 feet. So the first thing to do in encountering a problem like this is to make a sketch. Sketch or kill a word, whichever way you want to think about it. So here's our roller coaster. Here's the first linear section right over here, 200 feet off the ground. It encounters a parabola. And the parabola goes until x equal 100. And then it matches up with a second linear section. In most design problems, you get to pick the origin of your coordinate system. And it's always fairly convenient to put zero somewhere in the problem. So I just arbitrarily put x equals zero at the point where the first linear section encounters a parabola. So here's a list of the design criteria. There should be no bumps in the rails. And that means the parabolic sec section should exactly match up to the linear sections. And the second is that there should be no sudden changes in direction. That means that the first derivatives of the parabola should match exactly to the first derivatives of the linear sections where they match up. These, of course, are, re are reasonable conditions. If the tracks don't match up, then, of course, the wheels of your roller coaster car would get stuck. And if the first derivatives don't match up, you have the potential to launch the roller coaster car. And that would not be good. And now, after we've looked at all of the design criteria and drawn a sketch, and determine that everything looked reasonable, then we will start to write some equations. For, so for the first linear section, it will be described by a linear equation. And I'll use one subscript to mean the first linear section. There's a second linear section, it would have another linear equation for description. And the parabolic section would be described by a parabola. So as it stands right there, we would have to find values for M1, B1, A, B, C, M2, and B2. But we know some things already. We know that M1 is 0 0.8 because that is the slope of the first upgoing linear section. And M2 is minus 1.6 because the downgoing linear section has a slope of minus 1.6. So we can put those into the um, equations. That will simplify things. At least that eliminates two variables or two constants that we have to find uh, values for. Now since this is just one roller coaster, we can write this as though it were described by one function, but the function is going to have three pieces, one for the linear piece going up, one for the parabola, and one for the linear piece going down. So r of x here is going to be, I mean the roller coaster, it's a piecewise description of the roller coaster. When x equals zero, the linear section turns into a parabolic section, so for x less than zero, the roller coaster is described by that linear equation. At x equal 100, the parabolic section turns into a linear section. So here is the second linear section, and the parabola is sitting in the middle, and it is this equation is valid between x equals 0 and x equal 100. We already know some slopes. We know the slope for m1 and m2, so we're going to go ahead and put that in here, and this will be the equation, um, which is which contains as much information as we know at this present time. So here's an equation, a piecewise equation for a roller coaster with three sections. 
part of the design criteria was on the tracks and part was on the slopes. So we need to look at the first derivatives. So I'm going to put both equations together so um, you can see them. Here is just a repeat of what we had before. Okay, here's a roller coaster with its three sections. And to have the pieces match up, we mean that when x equals zero, these two equations have to have the same value. And when x equals 100, these two equations have to have the same value. That will make this function continuous. For the first derivative, we're going to take the derivative of the roller coaster expression, and we just do that in pieces. The derivative of 0 0.8 times x is just 0 0.8. So that one's done. The derivative of minus 1.6x plus any, any constant b2 is minus 1.6. So that one's done. For the parabola, we take the derivative of ax squared plus bx plus c. And that derivative is 2ax plus b. The criteria that the first derivatives match up means that, let me get the marker here, at x equals 0, these two equations have to be equal. And at x equals 100, these two equations have to be equal. That will make the first derivatives match up. So what we do is we generate some equations containing these constants that we need to find values for, b1, abc, and b2. We know that when x equals 0, these two equations have to be equal. So we will make we will equate them and set x equal to 0 and find that c must equal b1. This doesn't give us a value for c or for b1, but it does eliminate um, one of the uh, one of the constants that we have to find values for. Now when x is 100, the parabola has to exactly match the downgoing linear section. So I'm going to equate those two equations at x equal 100, and that would be right like this, and now I get an equation that looks like that. Okay. Now I'm going to look at the conditions on the first derivatives, on the slopes. I know that when x equals 0, these two equations have to be equal. I set them equal, set x equal to equal, um, and set x equal to 0, and I find that I now actually have a value for b. When x is 100, these two equations have to match up, so I set them equal to each other, and I get this at x equal 100. Now I will assemble all the conditions that I've developed for those coefficients. And the coefficients I'm trying to find values for are b1, b2, a, b, and c. So here are all those conditions. Some came from the first derivative. Some came from the fact that we just had to match up the tracks. And I have c has to equal b1. 100 squared a plus 100b plus c has to equal minus 160 plus b2. I know that b has to be 0 0.8. And 200a 200 plus c has to equal minus 1.6. Okay, so now I just back substitute and work around till I find what criteria um, to find values for those other equations or other constants. Since I know b is minus 0 0.8, I can immediately find that a has to be minus 0 0.012. Given those two values and the fact that b1 equals c, I can combine the two remaining equations to be b2 equals b1 plus 120. Okay, now I have two equations for three variables. b2 equals b1 plus 120, and c has to equal b1. Recall that the height, the value of b1 is the height of the first linear section when it encounters the parabolic section, and that was supposed to be 200. Now I know that b1 equals 200, I immediately get c equals 200 and b2 equals 320. And here's the solution. I put this axis over the side so it doesn't get in the way of the drawing. And I guess we're still pretty far off the ground here. I should have extended this first section so that you could get on the roller coaster. Anyway, right here we have a first linear section. 
Okay, we know the expression for it. 0 0.x plus 200. Okay, then we know we have a parabolic section. We know the expression for that. Minus 0 0.012x squared plus 0.8x plus 200. And now we also have an equation for the second section. y equals minus 1.6x plus 320. From this graph, as well as you can see, and from our numbers, the tracks line up. And here is a graph of the first derivatives. So here's the derivative of the first section. Here's the derivative of the second section. Of course, the derivative of a linear function is a straight line, so we're okay with that, just a constant. And here is the derivative of the parabolic section. Notice that, as designed, it matches up exactly with the first linear section and with the second linear section. In the book, the original problem was to match second derivatives as well, but that left many, many more constants to be um, evaluated. If you have the second derivatives matched as well, then you would have a smooth ride. So we matched the, uh, the function itself, we matched up every piece, that's so the tracks would match up. We matched up the first derivatives so you wouldn't launch any of the cars, so that the, the car can just stay on and gradually change from one, uh, one slope to another as it goes around that curve of the parabola. And uh, that wasn't too bad. The whole idea here, uh, the thing to take away from this exercise is first make a sketch. If the sketch doesn't look reasonable, go back to your design criteria and figure out if you read it right. Because there's no sense going really, really far away with equations and all kind of calculations if you didn't have things set up in the first place. The second is that you can describe something by a piecewise function. And if you want it continuous, look at the boundaries, look at the, the point that's right between each piece and make sure the equations match at that value. And if you want the first derivatives to, derivatives to match, that works as well, too. You just have to take the derivatives of every piece and then check to see if they match up right at the point where the domains match up.